You know, on an individual level, there is a direct connection between how much you hold in your heart at night with the creation in terms of grudges, in terms of hurt, in terms of hatred, and how your heart is able to fill itself with the love of the Creator and ascend to the highest ranks. And so when the Prophet talks about a man being from the people of paradise, just because at night he would empty his heart out of all grudges and seek forgiveness for people, how could the Prophet hold anything in his heart when he was so busy nurturing it with love every single night and filling it with the love of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala? And that's why you don't see the Prophet bringing up things in the past and you don't see the Prophet burdened or burdening others with previous grudges, even though he's surrounded by people that previously tried to kill him or even killed members of his family and companions. Now, it was likely that if you were a companion of the Prophet that you would have overstepped a few times because the Prophet was so merciful and so humble that you could forget yourself at times, right? So that could mean raising your voice in his presence وسلم, that could mean taking advantage of his kindness. And when you came to that realization, knowing who he was, you wanted to seek his forgiveness and one thing about the Prophet وسلم, a beautiful description of him is that he was hard to upset and he was quick to forgive. So it was very hard to make the Prophet وسلم, mad in the first place because again, وَمَنْ تَقَبَنِي نَفْسِهِ He wouldn't get angry for himself anyway وسلم. And at the same time, if you ask the Prophet وسلم, for forgiveness, even if he was very angry, he would immediately forgive you وسلم, no matter how large the transgression was prior to that. So you have this list of things, right? For one, the Prophet وسلم, did not let things get to him in the first place. And that's why you find, for example, when Aisha radiallahu anha describes as we're walking the streets of Medina and the Prophet وسلم, is in charge of Medina. And there were some who would say to the Prophet وسلم, Assamu alaikum, Assam meaning death instead of salam, peace. So they said it so quickly that the Prophet وسلم, could not distinguish salam from Sam as an ordinary listener. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha responds in like manner and says, may, may the curse of Allah be upon you, may death be upon you, and fights back. And the Prophet وسلم, just brushes it off. And he is in charge, meaning the Prophet وسلم, could actually escalate this to a very serious manner. But he tells Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, calm down. She says, Ya Rasulullah, didn't you hear what they said to you? And the Prophet وسلم, says, and didn't you hear what I responded? I said, wa alaykum, and upon you. So if they said salam, then it's salam upon them. And if they said Sam, then it's Sam upon them as well. And he tells Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ya Aisha, oh Aisha, Allah loves gentleness in all of his affairs. So he wouldn't let it get to him in the first place, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So you didn't get under his skin. And at the same time, the Prophet وسلم, also did not want to hear bad things about other people. He didn't want to hear things conveyed to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam that would cause that type of disruption. So he says sallallahu alayhi wasallam, don't convey bad things to me. فَإِنِّي أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَخْرُجَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنَا سَرِيمُ الصَّدْرِ I like to come out to you when my heart is pure, when my chest is pure. I don't want to carry any type of anger or hatred or have bad feelings towards any of you. So I don't want to even know when things are said and these types of things happen. And this is what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says about him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ لَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions, O Messenger of Allah, it is a great mercy of Allah. And from the mercy of Allah, you are gentle and kind towards them. And had you been harsh and hard-hearted, then they would have fled from you. But instead, you pardon them and you forgive them and you consult them in regards to your mutual affairs Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet وسلم, did not repel people with that type of a personality, right? And Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, of course, has his own particular vantage point where he mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never used to say to me, why did you do this or why didn't you do that? He says, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahsana nasi khuluqa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the most amazing character. When he sent me to go on an errand once, I got caught up playing with the other kids and when the Prophet وسلم, found me, the Prophet وسلم, simply smiled at me and he said, Unais, did you go where I told you to go? And I said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm sorry, I'm going right now. 
And Anas says, I served him for nine years, but he never chastised me harshly about anything or asked me, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Even though I was in a vulnerable position, right? The Prophet وسلم, was always gentle. He never really took things too far وسلم, and he was always overlooking and forgiving وسلم, whether it was with his family members or it was with those that were on the outside or it was with those who were close to him in the community وسلم. And then you see some of the more serious things, right? Again, the Prophet وسلم, was surrounded by people that had tried to hurt him before, right? So Anas who mentions, for example, that one time 80 men from Mecca descended upon Rasulullah وسلم, from a Tanaim, and they were in full armor and they had the intent of doing battle with him وسلم, and the Prophet وسلم, was able to thwart them and capture them and he didn't kill them وسلم, he let them go. And you find that the Prophet وسلم, was able to let go of not just the people physically and not hold them to account in that sense, but remove any type of ill feelings. Now, you know the story of Abu Talib and Abu Talib being like a father to the Prophet Sallallahu There were two men in the room when Abu Talib was dying that were preventing the Prophet Sallallahu from getting Abu Talib to say La ilaha illallah in his last moments. The first one is very well known, that's Abu Jahl. The second one is Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. Abu Jahl and Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah continued to shout out to Abu Talib as he was dying, are you on the religion of Abdul Muttalib or are you on the religion of your son Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And Abu Talib dies saying, I'm on the religion of Abdul Muttalib. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. He became a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never brought up that incident to him again. Abu Jahl, who of course died the way that he did, his son Ikrama becomes a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet ﷺ tells the companions, don't mention Abu Jahl, don't call Abu Jahl by Abu Jahl, the father of ignorance in the presence of Ikrama, because it might hurt his feelings. SubhanAllah, he is taking into consideration the feelings of Ikrama in regards to his father, even though his father oppressed the Prophet ﷺ and caused Abu Talib, who was like his father, to die in that way. You find Hind who ordered for the liver of Hamza anhu to be cut out and then she chewed it and spit it out. And she asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi forgiveness and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi forgave her. You find Wahshi, who was the one who actually carried out the order and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave Wahshi. So you have all of these different things. And one of the things that's important to keep in mind here is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaned on prior examples and we lean on his example Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when Abu Sufyan, comes to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, we were wrong and Allah has preferred you over us. The Prophet ﷺ recited what Yusuf ﷺ said, what the Prophet Joseph said, La اليوم, that there is no blame upon you today. And when it was brought up to the Prophet ﷺ, the way that these people had harmed him والسلام, he says, may Allah have mercy on my brother Moses. He was hurt with much more than this and he was patient والسلام. So the Prophet ﷺ, whether you were someone that annoyed him a little bit, or you were someone that actually transgressed upon him والسلام, in a minor fashion, or you had gone to the major length of actually trying to harm the Prophet وسلم, as soon as you sought his forgiveness, it was as if nothing happened and the Prophet وسلم, was able to direct that longing instead to his Lord at night seeking his forgiveness subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu alayhi Sallu alayhi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam